My name is Marissa Bozarth and I am the Museum Curator of History for Burlington County Division of Parks and I am also the Grant Coordinator for the County History Partnership Program Regrant. Our regrant program is run through the New Jersey Historical Commission. It is funding that Burlington County receives from them and then we issue it back out. Individuals that are eligible for applying for these funds are any nonprofit government or educational agency with a historic focus located within Burlington County. So your group must be um, must operate out of Burlington County. This year we are instituting something new. So if you have applied in the past, this would be new to you, um, that we are having a maximum grant request amount, which we have never done before. Um, so this year you are only allowed to request $10,000 or less on your applications. So there are several categories um, that you can apply for. So there's special projects, uh, which is then broken down into five subcategories, um, which are written history based on primary sources, non-written historical works, publications, and artful history. And you can also um, apply for general operating support. So those special project categories, what exactly do they mean? Uh, so written history based on primary sources are things such as oral history projects, um, national register nominations, any type of paperwork you may have to um, supply to get your location on the national register or the state registry, um, any biographies, and then also inventories or curatorial work. Um, if you're gonna do anything with, say, past perfect, um, trying to you know, create an inventory of all of the items that you have in your location or accessions, things like that would count as written history based on primary sources. Um, we also have non-written historical works. Uh, so those are things like videos, podcasts, um, work to websites, whether creating one or updating, um, self-guided tours, um, if you're gonna do something with QR codes, uh, that people can scan and then take a tour of your building or your township, um, those would count as non-written as well. Also any seminars or conferences or workshops that um, you want to put on. If you want to host anything, bring somebody in um, to put on a workshop or a lecture, those would count that way as well. And then any photography projects, if you're gonna do something such as having you know, somebody come in and photograph all of the architectural features of your building, that would count towards the non-written works as well. Next we have publications. Um, publications is any printing of brochures, tour guides, um, printing of any books, that are already published, so you're reproducing them, um, or replications of important historical documents. So if you wanna have anything scanned, um, printed, you know, that you can have copies for sale or available to the public, they would be considered publications. And last, we have artful history, which is sort of any historical feature that takes on an artistic nature. So murals, you want to put a mural on the side of the building, as long as that mural depicts a historical event, then it would count. Um, music also counts, if, does not count for, you can't purchase certain things. It's a little bit complicated, which we'll get into um, in the next slide or two. Um, but you can have musical performances, you can have musical pieces written, things like that and also reenactments and performances. If you want to hire any groups to come out and portray a specific era, um, hire an actor to portray a specific individual and put on a performance, you can do that under the artful history category as well. The next way that you can apply for funding is through general operating support. General operating support is there to help your organization um, continue, basically. Um, so things that are covered are administrative salaries. So if you have a secretary, um, somebody doing your marketing, things like that, you can use grant funding towards their salary. As long as the work that they are doing 
directly relates to the history side of your organization. Um, we can also help pay for utilities, um, office supplies, you know, your typical paper, pens, things like that. Um, technology, so we can't buy a computer, but we can help pay for software that you may need, things like that. And then professional development as well, if you wanna go to any classes, um, seminars, things like that for your staff. So that brings us to expenses. What is eligible and what is not? Um, so eligible expenses are typically reusable material. Um, the way that it is generally looked at is if it has a shelf life of three years or less, it is typically considered an eligible expense. If it's something that's gonna last longer, it is not. Um, we could pay for things such as, like I said, paper, but we can't buy a printer. Right? We can't buy you a computer, but we could pay for the software on the computer, things like that. Um, the other things that are eligible are bringing in scholars and professionals to help work with your organization, and also for programming. So if you wanna hire somebody um, to do programs for you, we, we're able to um, pay for those. Things that are ineligible are any capital expenses, um, bricks and mortar, right? We can't put on a roof. Um, we can't do you know, mortar work to help your building stand. What we could pay for is the report. If you need a structural report, we can, the grant can cover the cost of having that done in order to then have those other things take place. Um, but we also cannot pay for deficit reduction. If your organization happens to be in debt, you cannot use grant funding to pay it off. Um, you cannot use it for entertaining. So if you're gonna have a presentation, we'll pay for the presenter. We cannot pay for the snacks that you're providing to your audience. Um, scholarships, we also do not um, give out scholarships, so it would have to come out of your own funding. And fundraising, any fundraising that your organization is going to do um, or any money that goes into the fundraising has to come directly from your group. So another change that we made this year um, in light of COVID um, is the match requirements. So in the past, it was typically a one-to-one -one match. Now we're gonna focus on the application itself. Um, the first thing you will see when you open your application is an application checklist. It tells you everything that you need to have submitted to us in order to have a completed application. We're not gonna go through every page, um, but at least we'll run through really quickly what all needs to be there. So the first thing that you must turn in is the application checklist itself. I highly suggest as you are filling out your application, you check off the boxes as you come across something, make sure it is in there. If any of these pieces are missing, we will reach out to you and let you know that it's a complete application and you will have time in order to um, give us those missing parts, but do your best to have everything turned in when you turn it in um, the first time. The next thing you'll find is a signature page where we will need the signature of an authorized person from your organization, whoever your group chooses. Um, a lot of times it is the president of the organization or the treasurer on there, along with their contact information and their name printed so that we know who they are. Sometimes you can't read the signatures. The next thing you will need is your narrative. The narrative is where you will tell us all about you, all about your organization. So it is where you will give us your organization's purpose, your mission, um, the history of your group, and then what kind of project you are hoping to receive funding for and why that is important to you. The narrative is to be kept short and sweet. We don't want it any longer than three pages. Um, so just give us the basics. The next thing are the finance charts. So there are two of them. There's an expenses chart and an income chart. The expenses chart is where you are going to mark down everything that you anticipate spending from the grant funds. The income chart is where you are marking down any money you are anticipating bringing in from that particular project. 
If you have questions about any of the finance charts, you can always reach out to us. Um, the next thing is biographies and resumes of any key staff that you may have. We don't need resumes of every staff person that you may have. We only need the ones that pertain to the project or the general operating support. If they don't apply to the grant itself, we don't need to know, have their resumes. We also need a list of all of your board members with their terms and their length of service. Um, ideally, you would tell us their position, obviously how long they have been in that position, and when their term expires is also important. If there's any background information on any of your board members that you think would be useful, like say your treasurer happens to be an accountant, let us know that. Right? That kind of gives you a step up against some. We also need a copy of an audit um, or your organization's most recent 990 form. Whichever you happen to fill out on a yearly basis, we'll need a copy of that. We also need a copy of a board approved ADA plan. If you do not have an ADA plan and you're in the process of possibly creating one, just send us a paragraph letting us know that you're in the process of doing so. There's a couple pages at the end of the application yes, with yes and no questions relating to your ADA plan. If you don't have one and you just fill that out as well and explain the no's, we understand historic buildings, some of the stuff is difficult to have. Um, sometimes your township, if your building is owned by the township, you can go to them and get the township's ADA plan and just attach it for us. We will also need copies of publicity. So any publicity that your organization may have had, newspaper articles, something printed from a website, things like that, um, we are looking for as well. And then one of the new things for this year is a copy of your most recent year-end financial statement and or, depending on what you have, your most recent New Jersey charities registration. We just need a copy of those forms um, to show that your organization is in good financial standing. That brings us to the review process. So what happens once your application is turned over? So you can see all of the dates on here as to when applications are due. Um, and once we receive them, they will be reviewed by park staff, mostly for completeness and eligibility. If there is something missing or what you have applied for cannot be funded for one reason or another, we will reach out to you and let you know that. Once they are approved, um, reviewed by park staff, they then go for panel evaluations mid to end of October. Um, our review panel will look through all of the applications and score them based on five criteria. Those are quality of experience, audience engagement, attendance or quantitative impact, governance and budget. Once that is done, we will have recommendations ready to go to the Board of County Commissioners in November. If you are awarded a grant, what do you do next? Typically, you will find out if you have been awarded in February of that grant year. You will then receive a grant agreement. The grant agreement, it is very important that it is signed and returned along with your insurance certification. As soon as that is received back, you will be issued a payment voucher. This payment voucher is how you will receive your money. So you definitely want to make sure we get it back. We need it signed and returned as soon as possible. And as soon as we get it back, 75% of your award will be received. Your final 25% of your award, you will receive upon approval of your final report the following year. So you'll have two reports to fill out, the interim report, which is typically due in June, and a final report due in January, or when your project is finished, if you complete it prior. 
So that is pretty much everything for how to complete our applications. Um, if you have any questions regarding you know, a project, eligibility, budget, really anything while you are filling out your application, feel free to contact me. There you can see my email and phone number and I'd be more than happy to help you out in any way that we can. My name is Marissa Bozarth. You can contact me through email or phone and we look forward to seeing how you can enhance history here in Burlington County.